Adelaide, Brisbane and Canberra are three major cities on the continent of Australia. If there are three major highways to get from Adelaide to Brisbane, and there are four major highways to get from Brisbane to Canberra, how many different routes could one take to travel from Adelaide to Canberra? One way we can approach this problem is with a tree diagram. So we can see that from our first city to our second city, we have three possible routes of getting there. And then from our second city to our third city, we have four possible routes of getting there. So I could go one way there. I could take my first highway and then my second highway here first highway and third highway here, first highway and fourth highway here. So I have four different routes if I take this first highway. If I choose to go on the second highway, you can see that we're gonna have another four possibilities that we could travel. And if we choose to go on that third highway, again, there's four different possibilities that we could go once we're at this point. So if I have three choices to get to point B and four choices to get to point C, Altogether, there are 12 different ways that I can go from point A to point C. There's 12 ways to get from Adelaide to Canberra. Let's say that we are at a hotel where a continental breakfast is being served. You have a choice of four pieces of fruit, three different pastries, or two different beverages. And if you have to choose one item from each of the three categories, what possible combinations could you come up with for your breakfast menu, assuming that each piece of fruit goes with each pastry and goes with each beverage? A tree diagram is one way to organize this information where we can begin by listing each of the four pieces of fruit and then pairing that fruit with each of the three pastry items. And then each of those pastry items can go with either juice or coffee, juice or coffee, juice or coffee. So we can see that one possible breakfast is kiwi fruit, toast, juice, or kiwi fruit toast coffee. So we can write those out here in what's called the sample space. We can have kiwi fruit bagel juice, kiwi fruit bagel coffee, kiwi fruit muffin juice, kiwi fruit muffin coffee. So by following the arrows on our tree diagram, it's kind of like choose your own adventure, and we can see that we're going to end up with six different possible breakfasts with the kiwi fruit, six different choices for the apple, six different ones if we have an orange, and six different ones if we have a banana. So altogether, if we were to count how many different menus we can create, we're going to see that there are six, 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 and six, 24 different menus in total. While a tree diagram helps us to organize what we're doing and to visually see what's happening, that becomes problematic when we're given a lot of different possibilities. So let's take a look at a faster way here and hopefully we can see that there's four pieces of fruit. Each one of those pieces of fruit can be paired with one of three pastry items. So if we were to just ignore the drinks for a second, if I have four different fruit choices times three different pastry choices, we're gonna end up in this column with 12 different possible menus. If I were to then incorporate the beverages for which I have two different choices, again, as soon as I put two different choices here, each one of these possibilities is now doubled when we add on our two choices. So a faster way of doing this is by saying, okay, if we're going to choose one of these four, one of these three, one of these two, we can multiply together how many choices we have at the first stage, how many choices we have at the second stage, and how many choices we have at the third stage. Four times three is 12, 12 times two is 24. We have 24 possibilities in total. This is what we refer to as the fundamental counting principle. So we're going to take a task, we're gonna divide it into stages, and we're going to determine how many choices do we have at each stage. So you're visually gonna picture like you are at a continental breakfast. We have one table where the fruit is laid out. We have one table where the pastries are laid out. We have one table where the beverages are laid out. We're choosing one item from each of those tables. And so we're going to figure out how many ways can we choose the first item, how many ways can we choose the second item? How many ways can we choose potentially the third item, fourth item, etc.? And if we are only choosing one item at each stage, we're going to multiply those together and that's going to give us the number of possible outcomes. So we're going to take how many choices do we have at each of those stages, multiply them together, and that's how many possible outcomes we could have. If Cam is going on vacation and he packs in his suitcase three golf shirts, one red, one blue, one green, and two pairs of shorts, one is khaki and one is black, what is the total number of outfit variations he has for golfing? So we can start by diagramming this out here. So we have three different shirt choices, and each one of those shirts can be paired with either khaki shorts or black shorts. So we can see that we have three choices of shirts. We have 
choices of shorts. If each of the shirts can be paired with each of those shorts, I can multiply those together and we can end up with six different outfits. We can have red and khaki, red and black, blue and khaki, blue and black, green and khaki, or green and black. So assuming that each shirt can go with each pair of shorts, Cam has six different outfits that he's able to wear. In our next example, we're going to roll a die. So that's just the singular form of dice. So one dice. How many possibilities are there of rolling a number greater than four? So if this is a regular six-sided die, the numbers go one, two, three, four, five, six. So the only sides that contain a number greater than four are going to be six or five. So the first thing we wanna do is figure out what are the possible outcomes. And then we have one number on that dice that is a five. We have one number on that dice that is a six. So if we add those two possibilities together, we have two different possibilities for rolling a number greater than four on that die. In mathematics, the word and generally means that we are going to multiply. The word or generally means that we are going to add. The fundamental counting principle only applies if we see that word and. We are choosing something from this stage and this stage. As soon as we see the word or, the fundamental counting principle does not apply. We can still figure out the question using logical reasoning, but this is not an example of where you're going to use the fundamental counting principle. So you need to be careful. You can't just multiply numbers together. You have to really be thinking, is this a context in which we can use the fundamental counting principle? Are we choosing one item off each stage? example, we have one of those old-fashioned bicycle locks where you have to turn each wheel and in order for that lock to open you have to get all four of those numbers in the exact order that the combination requires. Now in our example we happen to have five wheels. I just couldn't find a diagram with five wheels so we actually have five wheels. So the first thing you want to do is ask yourself do we need all five wheels to have the correct digit in order to open? Is this a case where we need this number and this this number and this number and this number and this number. And yes, we need all five, otherwise the lock is not going to open. So this is a case where we can use the fundamental counting principle. The next thing we want to do is to draw out the stages so that we can figure out how many choices we have at each stage. I'm using the digits zero through nine, so that means I have ten possibilities for my first stage. I can have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine. So there's ten different possibilities that can go into that first position. Now this particular question tells me that I can repeat digits. So if I choose for example let's say there's a 7 here I can use a 7 here. So I'm still gonna have 10 possibilities in order for that lock to open and we can have 10 possibilities for the third wheel and 10 for the fourth wheel and 10 for the fifth wheel. So in order for that lock to open, I need the right number here and here and here and here and here. So 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 is just 10 to the power of five. So if I quickly multiply that, I can see that there's going to be 100,000 possibilities for lock A. Lock B also is going to have five wheels, so we can begin by drawing this out, but this time we cannot have repeating digits. So that means if I'm using zero through nine, I still have 10 possibilities for that first wheel, but whatever number I use here, I cannot use that again. So I have one last possibility for this wheel here. So now there's only nine numbers that could be there. And then once I use a number here, I again have one less possibility that can be used there. So now there are only eight numbers that I can use here and then I have one less choice for that wheel and I have one less choice for that wheel. So now when I go to multiply those through I'm going to have 30,240 different possible combinations for lock B. Because there are way more combinations with lock A that is going to be the more secure lock. Our last example involves a deck of cards so a standard deck of playing cards. We are going to draw a single card and we're going to determine how many possibilities are are there for the first event and then for the second event. Now if you're not familiar with a deck of playing cards, on page 70 in your textbook they actually have a diagram listing all of the cards. So basically there are four different suits, two of them are red, 
Two of them are black. So we have the red suits, the diamonds, and the hearts. The black suits are the clubs and the spades. There are 13 cards within each suit. We have three what are called face cards, the jack, the queen, and the king. We also have ace and then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So ace is kind of like the one. And so there are 10 number cards three face cards. So 13 cards per suit means that we have 52 cards in total. If there are three face cards in each of those suits, there are 12 face cards in total. All right, so we are going to draw one card and we wanna know how many possibilities can we draw a club or a red card, a heart or a two. So that word or is really important. It means that we are going to be adding and we are not gonna be able to use the fundamental counting principle. So we're going to have to reason this out another way. So let's start by taking a look at our clubs here. So we know we have 13 clubs. We know we have 26 red cards. We also know that or means addition. So if we add 13 plus 26, we're going to get 39 possibilities for event A. Now, what about event B? And you may have noticed that this one is slightly different. And we can go back to set theory to help us reason this out here. So there is no possibility that one card is going to be both a club and a red card. So if I were to draw my Venn diagrams, I have disjoint sets. There are 13 clubs and the clubs are black. So the black cards cannot be the same as the red cards. So there are 26 red cards, either hearts or diamonds, plus 13 clubs. So or, remember that's your union, so that's like the bowl it contains everything. If we add those up, this is how many we get. But in event B, we have hearts or a two. Is it possible for a card to be both a heart as well as a two? And yes, it is. So when we go to diagram this out, we're going to have intersecting circles. I have 13 hearts. I have four cards that are a two. Of my four twos, one of them happens to be a heart, which means three of them are not, the diamond, the spade, and the club. Now, I've already got one heart in my heart circle. That means there are 12 hearts that are not going to be a two. And again, if we were to add this up, this, so this is the bowl that contains everything, 12 plus one is 13, plus three is 16. So we have still 13 hearts, but we only have three remaining hearts that are not a two. We go ahead and add those up. 13 plus three means there are 16 possibilities to fit the scenario given in event B. So if we see the word and, and it is a case where we are choosing one item from each stage, we can multiply. But you really have to be careful. If we see the word or, it means addition, and then this is where the set theory can come in to help us reason out these problems. Do we have disjoint sets? Do we have intersecting sets? And that can help us come to the correct conclusion. And just one side note, this should be three remaining twos.